Gen Tech Forum. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure DNS backup because uh, I realized that there is a new version of DNS Center is available and I'm looking to do a software upgrade. But before we do the software upgrade, it's very important to take a backup so that if something goes wrong, you can always restore to the previous backup and you got a working fabric, right? So let's go and talk about how to create a backup. You need a remote destination machine where you want to backup DNS Center configuration. DNS Center configuration can be very heavy based on uh, it's a fabric, it's a non-fabric because it's backup entirely in uh, all the object and iOS images, etc., everything, all your policies and all those things. So it can be very heavy. So make sure that you have enough storage and operating system, what you can choose, you can choose any variety of uh, Linux-based operating system like CentOS, Ubuntu, uh, etc. What you need on that operating system or on that remote machine is rsync utility because rsync has this beautiful concept of a resume that means if the connection breaks for some reason it can always resume from that point onwards you don't have to start the transfer from zero how to check that you can go to var log and look at this is a debian example you can do a dp dp kg log and search for rsync i'll show you in the demo also you must have a read write permission to the remote directory Obviously, this is pretty obvious. And also you have SFTP installed. Installing SFTP is very, very easy. Uh, you can go to this link, linuxize.com and uh, find the command. It's pretty, very easy. In one or two command, you'll get your via SFTPD running and you can check the status using these commands and we will show you that. Another check, uh, what we are going to do is a DNAC CLI side of validation right we generally don't go to the dnc cli but here i'm going to show you uh, how you can monitor your backup how you can check your backup history path and everything and to an extent if you want you can configure your backup destination from dna center cli itself so the form what you will fill on ui you can do that via cli as well by using command something like maglev backup remote update uh, put your remote ip address port number and destination etc all right so now let's go and look at the demo you go to your dns center you go to um, not activity sorry about that go to system Let me fresh go to system, go to backup and restore. And if you don't have anything, you will not see. If you are coming it first time, you will not see anything. You have to go to configure and configure your remote destination. So, in my case, I have uh, this machine I'm using as a remote destination. This is the port number I'm using, and this is the path. Okay. You uh, you have to put the IP address, uh, sorry, password for the remote destination and encryption pa passphrase so that when you backup, it uses this passphrase to encrypt the backup. And when you want to restore, you need to make sure that you remember your passphrase. So uh, keep it safe someplace. Once you have it configured, you are going to say apply and DNA Center is going to actively try to log in using that port IP address and port number going to that path and validate that yes, it has read and write privileges and all good, but it will not initiate any backup yet. So how to, uh, we, this is the backup configuration. Now how to create a backup, what you can do, you can go to activity, see previous activity and hit create backup. Here you can create backup. Make sure you put all the lowercase because DNA Center doesn't like an uppercase here and some other restriction. You can say create now. You can say create uh, schedule daily or you can say schedule weekly and choose your schedule here, uh, date and time. Also, you can see DNA Center all data. If you want to back up assurance data, there is a certain um, checks or certain parameter you have to meet uh, because the assurance is very heavy uh, but i would advise you take the standard cisco dna center without assurance data so you have all the policies object and design everything you'll just lose assurance if you have 
to restore, which I think is fair deal. All right. So I highly recommend you go schedule weekly if you are, you are handling DNA center operation. But create new comes handy if you are doing any migration or any upgrade. Like in my case, I want to upgrade to the next release. And just before the upgrade, I'll make sure that I have a point in time backup. And that's where we will say create new. Let's, we'll come back to this tab. You can also go to schedule and do the same thing, same options, right? And if you have taken any backup, you will see those backups will appear here as I have a backup from September 1st. All right. So let's go ahead and create a backup. Before we create the backup, let's go and validate our backup machine. Okay. So this is my uh, backup machine. And I'm in the backup directory. If I do a ls l, you can see I have a backup from September 1st. And uh, these are the things it is actually uh, backing up. Okay. You may think that uh, if my remote machine is going beyond uh, the storage limit, what we can do? Do I have to come and delete individual uh, directories? Uh, there is a better way to handle that. What you can do, you can always go back to your DNS center and delete the backup. What it will do, it will actually make DNS center logging to your backup and clear, delete all those directories. So you essentially do not need to touch your remote destination at all. You can do everything from DNS center. And that, that I think is a very uh, impressive option. All right, so we wanted to validate a few things as we show you. So let's go and say, what is my on remote destination? I'm going to park this here and Okay. As you can see, this is running. From DNS center side, what you can do, we can just going to run those few commands, what I have shown you earlier. We'll look at maglev backup spray. We'll see maglev backup remote display as you can see whatever, whatever you can see on ui you can see here perfect and let's see if there is any backup running right now backup progress so no backup in progress when we kick in backup we should see some entries coming here so let's go ahead uh, and create a backup once we have a backup from today's date we are going to go ahead and delete the old backup all right, so let's create a backup. And I'm going to say STA wired call. Nothing fancy. Backup initiated successfully. And obviously, it will take some time. You can abort any time. And you can see these are my backup details started progressing so this is a good time to go and check from dna center cli as you can see these are the component getting backed up dna center will go ahead back it up to the remote destination and we should see new folders coming in here as well september uh, december 6th as you can see so this is pretty straightforward um, again the backup complete backup takes some time so don't worry about that and you can see all your backups here our goal is create a new backup and then we will go ahead and delete the old one it's progressing well Meantime, let's okay. 
very nice this is really quick I'm a little surprised here okay now you can see I have some backup metadata and if I go to one of them say CD backup metadata list that you can see I have two entities under that one is from September 1 that's my old one and that one which I created today so now let's get rid of the old one just for the sake of demonstration okay it is yet to make it to the I think some progress uh, processing is going on behind the scene that is why it is not okay yep now as you can see in real time it started showing here so we have created this and this is my size the one first backup when I created it was roughly 1300 MB but now it has grown to 1757 because we created a lot of object we created the whole entire fabric right so now let's go ahead and delete this I'm sure I'm with uh, September correct make sure you're deleting the one you want because this action is irreversible okay backup deleted successfully final check let's go to the remote destination now you can see I have only one file which belongs from today's date let's go to one more in DP you can see everything is from today's date so this is good all right this is all I wanted to show you now what we will do next we are going to go ahead and kicking our software upgrade that I will show you in another video so feel free to follow along if you are also doing any software upgrade and I'll see you in the next video thank you